Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. It's great to see you all again. We are again with Manny Pacheco of Forgotten Hollywood, our favorite Hollywood historian, and my great partner, John Coleman. How are you doing, guys? Great. Hey, Manny, good to see you. Happy to be here. You know, as a Hollywood historian, you, uh, your bailiwick, if I can use that word, mm -hmm. is really uh, movies of the past, primarily uh, pre-1960, 70, like that. But every year, of course, you're you are intimately involved in Hollywood history, new history, making history. And every year you have your favorite films of that year. Forget the past, current films, your favorites. Here we are in the 21st century. We're 20 years, 21 years into the, the 21st century. And you must have quite a collection of favorite films from the 21st century which we could debate whether they're historic at, at this point, being only 20 years old. But right. nevertheless, tell us some of your favorite films so far. Well, I've, I've done a countdown of my top 50. In fact, it's on my blog at ForgottenHollywood.com, and you can find the stories behind the movies I select. Now, when I, when I choose my favorite films as opposed to the best films of the last 20 years or uh, of the 21st century... Right. Uh, these are films that I like to watch over and over and over again, as opposed to a film that I can watch once and say, that was a great film, and then never want to watch it again. Uh, what, what comes to mind, for example, might be Roma. Roma was a fabulous film, but you know, if I, I don't know if I'm going to watch that again. Uh, another film that comes to, to mind, Moonlight, just a beautifully constructed film. Don't know if I'm going to watch it again. So when I put this list together, people are going to say, well, where's Parasite? Where's Roma? Where's, where's Moonlight? Well, they're not movies that are I consider my favorite, and that's that's the distinction. So that said, there were a couple of films that missed the top 50, and I want to mention them because this is going to be the only chance that I ever bring them up. Uh, films like uh, the Downton Abbey movie. Well, everybody knows that I love the TV show. So, of course, the Downton Abbey movie was, was fabulous, but it, it wouldn't make a top 50, but it was close. I liked it. Uh, the Book Thief is another one. The Great Debaters... Um, there was also the movie 21. I don't know if anybody remembers that one about poker. Um, here's a great title. Should have made the top 50 just on the title, but what a, what a great film. Film stars don't die in Liverpool. So there's a number of films that could have made my top 50, but your question is, what are the films that I really like? Well, let me start with the film that probably is the earliest of all the films. It came out in 2001, so that's that covers that 20-year period very nicely, and it, it's number 50, and that's Gosford Park, again, written by Julian Fellows, the man who wrote Downton Abbey. So that's a great place to start. It, the most recent film on my list is a film that came out in uh, the last week in December 2020, so that, that covers the whole 20-year gambit. And it's at number, uh, I don't know what number it's at, but it's, I think it's at number 17, actually. And it's Promising Young Woman, which uh, was written by Emerald F F Fernell and, and won a, an Academy Award for uh, Best Adapted Screenplay or Best Original Screenplay, one of the screenplay awards. And you, you, that's a theme, by the way. I have to mention that most of the ones that I picked are winners in the writing category. So it's obvious to me that my favorite picks actually have really good writing behind it, which I'm really happy that that, that happens. Out of the 50 films, I would say 35 to 40 of them actually won awards for best writing of, of some kind. Are there any on your list that are like uh, some of the animated uh, films? No, I, I didn't pick anything animated that I can think of. I'm looking at the list right now and I don't see animation. What about Up? Up did not make my hmm. list. Uh, I don't watch a lot of animation. I should probably watch a lot more. And if I did, I'd probably, I would probably have them on my list. The one that comes the closest that has some animation in it, it didn't make the top 50, but it does make my top 100, is that fabulous movie with Amy Adams, that Disney presentation of Enchanted. So that oh. actually made my top 100, but not my top 50. Oh. You know, another question you might ask are what are some of my foreign films? I do watch foreign films. But I also find that a lot of folks who are very critically inclined, who like to pick the important films each year, and then they pick films that nobody's ever going to watch, but they find them, you know, from little, little 
villages and little countries. But I, that said, I did pick two that made my list that are actually foreign films. And Cold War is a, po a Polish entry. Uh, beautifully done film. It's the prettiest film I've ever seen photographed. I think the cinematography is pristine. The music is absolutely wonderful. A lot of jazz and and some oldies classics. It's just a gorgeous film. It's it's Polish and it's called Cold War. And the other film, which is in my top ten, and that's Lion. What a fabulous film! It's it's not uh, completely. Um, a, a, a film that's that's foreign because the last half of the film is in English, but the first half of the film is, um, I believe it's it's filmed in, uh, if not India, in and around India, and and, and there are a lot of very uh, different native languages, hundreds of languages in India, and it's one of those special dialect languages. But Lion is just a beautiful, gorgeous piece that makes me cry every time I see it. Mm. Did you find, uh, Manny, did you find that uh, in looking back at your top 50 favorite films, do you find that you like um, a certain genre more than another? Do you like uh, romances versus action adventure? Or do you yeah, lean one way or the other? That's a really good question. And, and you know what? I have thought about it, and it seems what's emerging are, are historical dramas. I like films about people who existed. Uh, Molly's Game. Uh, Molly really existed. She uh, she yeah. found she was an Olympian, uh, or, or or was going to be an Olympian, but before a terrible accident. Same thing with uh, with Tanya Harding. I Tanya, uh, she was going to you know she was set to become an Olympian until of course what happened to her. But then there are other folks that maybe you haven't heard of the 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 the, the, uh, the person who tried to retrieve her her stolen uh, art in Women in Gold, you know, from the oh, Nazis. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Midnight in Paris is filled with people like Ernest Hemingway and Cole Porter and Gertrude right. Stein. Um, Fun movie. Yeah, and, and also a Hidden Figures, Catherine Johnson, who was part of the space team at NASA. They even have a building named after her. Right. Truth featured, you know, uh, the, the story of how Dan Rather got fired at, you know, on, on, at CBS. So historical dramas seem to be really big on my list. Uh, there's 20 years of best pictures. How many? How many of the best pictures over the last 20 years do you think I would have chosen in my top 50? Oh, mm. half. You do you think 10? That's a good. That's a good guess. What do you think, Art? Uh, yeah, I don't know because I haven't heard you say anything about any of the Bourne movies or money. Well, that's not a best picture. Those are not <laughs> bad. That wasn't the oh, question. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm, you're talking how about your favorites. Favorite? I I, I picked six. Six of the best pictures actually made my top huh. 50. I will run them down very quickly. The Green Book, which is really recent. I think it was 2018. Yep. Uh, Viggo Mortensen, really, really wonderful film. Uh, another one, Chicago, the 2002 mm. best picture. Oh, what mm. a great musical. And one of three yes. musicals that actually made my, my list. I have three musicals on my list. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. The King's Speech made my yes. list. What a great Another historical drama, King yeah. George the Sixth and uh, Lionel Logue, you know, teaching the king to to, to present to, uh, before the public on radio. That's three. Argo, Argo made my really? list. Uh, wonderful film. I mean, I thought so too. Yeah, very good. Film. Great popcorn film in, in my estimation. Spotlight. You might remember that wonderful piece uh, that that uh, highlighted the uh, newspaper accounts of what was going on in the Catholic Church. Mm. That was uh, made right. my list. Right. And uh, another that made my list was. Um, let's see, I'm trying to find uh, the other one that was the best picture of the year. Oh, The Artist, The Artist, The Artist, oh, yeah. the artist was a great film. Uh, so th those are the, the best pictures. I mean, so I, I, you know, I'm happy to pick those six. Yes, Parasite didn't make my list. Yeah. It's a great film, but it, it just didn't make my list. Yeah. And uh, and The Shape of Water, I didn't care for yeah. the film. So. So, so, it's not gonna make so my list. you're still Why? you're still uh, uh, finalizing this list for the time being. Um, uh, well, it's always a work in progress. But, but you announce these on your website, don't you? Yes, uh, two two a week, every week since uh, in May. I've been doing this since May. We should be completed soon. Uh, you'll notice I haven't mentioned number one. I'm not sure when this is going to run. I don't know if I should mention. No, number no, no. One. That's even tease. No. Okay. Make us go to the website. Yeah, give us the name of the website so I could put a little lower third there. 
ForgottenHollywood.com. And let me let me also mention a couple of movies that you might not have heard of. These were little movies that did big things, in my, in my estimation. And that's why I included them in, in this list. And I think one of the, the best examples that made my top 10 is a movie called Get Low. If you've never heard of this, because it did very, very poorly at the box office, but it starred, listen to this star power, Robert Duvall, who got nominated for an Academy Award, by the way, for his performance, Sissy Spacek, and Bill Murray. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's a wonderful, wonderful movie, and and it's appeared on television, but the only place you've, you've been able to see it so far is PBS. So they must think it's pretty special, too, if PBS has grabbed onto it. Wow. It's, it's what's called, it called? Get? Get Low. L-O-W-E. I, I think it's the best film that Sissy Spacek and Robert Duvall ever mm -hmm. made. Truth, truth be told. And the other movie that I think that, that belongs on this list that, um, that I think never gets mentioned um, I think is a really, really fun movie is the remake of the lady killers. Oh yeah. The lady killers with a uh, Tom Hanks and JK Simmons. And it, it's one of the lesser known uh, films of the Coen brothers. Everybody remembers Fargo and you yeah. know, no place for old men, but the lady killers is a really well done movie. And one more thing I want to mention, who do you think the actor that appears the most on my list? It's a surprising name. I didn't figure it out until, it came up. I counted them, and I went, wow, it's him, of all people. Tom Hanks has three. Uh, J.K. Simmons appears in three of these movies. Uh, I believe, um, I want to say, um, Helen Mirren, I believe, appears in three of these movies. Um, yeah, but I actually have one actor who appears in four of my, my top 50, Sam Rockwell. Mm, really? Sam, uh, yeah. He was, in, he was in the movie uh, Richard Jewell. Which the Clint Eastwood film? Yeah, he, yes. he was also. A lawyer. In, that's right. He was Frost in Frost Nixon, playing uh, one of the uh, one of the prep prep people for David Frost. He was also in uh, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Mm -hmm. He sure. played the sh sheriff, and he won an Academy Award for that role, by the way. So that's yeah, a great he, movie. he appears in four. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's he's he deserves to be on this list. I, four times he appears, and and. I was shocked that he actually is in four of my my my, uh, my choices. Yeah, uh, he's a sleeper. He's a sleeper, but he's good. He's he always is, he's an excellent actor. Yes, and oh, he's had a nice wide variety of roles. Right, and the fourth film, just so because I know people are asking, the fourth film he was actually in Jojo Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> so I love so Jojo. I think I what think that uh, while this is still a work in progress, uh, people ought to go to ForgottenHollywood.com. And uh, yes. as, when this comes out, you'll probably be closer to having nailed down uh, this Jello, uh, which is your list, uh, for yes. the first fifth of the 21st century. Yes, my favorite 50 of the 21st right. century. Of the, the, um, enjoy a fifth with me of the 21st century. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Manny. Uh, again, it just, uh, it's always brilliant to hear you talk and your insights that of uh, things that we have forgotten and probably would never know if it weren't for you bringing it up. Thank you. Well, I, I appreciate that. And I ask people to go to my website because if you want to see some fun movies, this, this might be the kind of list that you can, you can draw from. So thank yeah. you for having me guys. I do appreciate it. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.